This is a 2021 Honda Ridgeline Sport, a five passenger truck that, for the first time in its history, looks just like a truck. My name is Robin Warner, an experienced engineer and magazine editor, and I want to tell you more about it. What is a Honda Ridgeline? Well, it's a pickup truck, but one built with unit construction as opposed to the traditional body on frame method. That means two things. It drives much more like a car or car-based SUV, which is good, but it also has towing capacity more like a car-based SUV, which is actually also good, except for barstool arguments maybe, but I'm getting ahead of myself. The Ridgeline Sport is the lowest of four trims available in 2021 beneath the RTL, RTLE, and Black Edition models, which means it goes without wireless phone charging capability, heated front seats, and a truck bed audio system. But every 2021 Ridgeline gets the same powertrain, which includes a 3.5 liter naturally aspirated V6 engine pumping out 280 horsepower and 262 pound-feet of torque, and a 9-speed automatic transmission that then sends power to all four wheels. The base price for the 2021 Honda Ridgeline Sport is $37,665 and my test car cost $40,860. For those that are interested, I included detailed specifications including dimensions, fuel economy, and options in the description. Alright, let's take a look around the car. It's been out for a while, but really for the first time, the Honda Ridgeline looks like a truck. It's been updated for 2021. It was a second generation platform in 2017, but it got a mid-cycle refresh for 2021, and it was a pretty heavy one. Honda claims that everything forward of the A-pillars was redesigned. So that's new hood, new headlights and grill, front fascia, and all that kind of stuff. Now this particular car also has the HPD package, which means um, a special front grill, among other things. So that's not the standard new grill for 2021, but the HPD package grill. The HPD package also includes bronze finished 18 inch wheels that say HPD in the center caps, in case you forget. And then you also get those black fender flares and some HPT emblems and decals and stuff like that. Generally speaking, I like the shape because I like trucks. So how about that? But you can tell this is not a full-size half-ton truck, but it's got a very big cabin for the size. The bed is a little bit squat and stunted by, by comparison, but it is plenty wide, um, 50 inches, Honda claims. Plenty for two by fours as long as you're happy to open the tailgate. Um, for 2021, the Ridgeline also gets a new bumper as well as twin exhaust tailpipes there and there. And there is your class three trailer hitch because yes, you can tow 5,000 pounds. This is a truck with a lot of trucky things, but right now let's look inside. As I head towards the door, you are looking at platinum white paint which is a $395 option, which is a pretty darn decent bargain considering that the HPD package is $2,800. But anyway, here we are looking inside. This is a pretty minimal interior by a lot of standards because this is the base trim. You get manually adjustable seats and you're not loaded with uh, tons of gadgets and options, but really you have Bluetooth, you have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, everything you need. And I actually really appreciate the fact that I got a manual foot brake. That's a welcome change in a lot of ways. You do get power windows, things like that. There's your trunk release, fuel cap release, hood. And um, this one is gonna be a phone I'm gonna show you a second, a cargo light. And then your econ button, if you wanna save the world. And you do have real gauges with a small display screen in the middle of the instrument cluster. And then you do get um, a seven inch display audio screen for your center console, but check it out. That is an actual volume knob right there. How cool is that? You also get three zone climate control, 
with easy to use buttons, things like that. Plenty of storage, USB ports and different charging, push button transmission, cup holders, and a big center console storage with more USB charging options, things like that. Let's take a look in back. One of the features of this Honda Ridgeline is how wide it is. Nearly 80 inches, 78.6 inches wide. So that means you've got plenty of space for three passengers back here. I mean, look at that center seat. That's wider than you're used to getting, right? And then if you only have two passengers, they get cup holders and things like that to use. But plenty of knee room. That's not an issue here at all. You know, plenty of space. And I'm uh, five foot 11 and a quarter inches, if you wanna know exactly how tall I am. One thing having a wide cabin means that you have some neat storage options even inside. So let me show you this. Pull handle and the seats pop up. And just like that, you have a healthy amount of storage that you can put back here if you don't have more than one passenger. So that gives you a lot of options to keep things entirely out of the elements, stuff like that. But if you fill this up and you need more, there is more. Tailgate down. And look down here. So there is your Space Saver Spare and a whole bunch of waterproof cargo area underneath it. And you could fit quite a lot of stuff there. And check it out. There's a drain plug down there. So if you want, this could function like a cooler. It does seal, has rubber up here to seal, and uh, you know is effectively becomes like a nice big cooler, great for tailgating, stuff like that. And maybe you're saying, Robin, that's great, but the tailgate's in the way. How can I access it? Well, check this out. Tailgate back up. See where it says release right there? Look under there. The tailgate also opens like a door to give you access this way. And now you have easy access to things, including this drain down here, which is cool. And you might be saying, Robin, that's great, but I still actually need more storage. Well, there is more. Fold these down and you've got a little bit of extra storage here too. Fun little compartment. It's always nice having those little neat little compartments to put things, right? And then in addition to that, Honda included a lot of good secure hooks front and back. So you have these four hooks here. I'll hop onto the bed as well as hooks upper and lower in the front. And you also have, these are the cargo lights on. I mean, it's during the day right now, so you can't tell, but that'd make a big difference to have good vision of exactly what's in the bed if you have to do some loading or unloading at night. So anyway, a lot of options for loading things in the Honda. And on top of that, Honda claims 1,583 pounds of payload capacity. That's, that's a darn decent amount. You know, that's right there with uh, Ford Ranger, which is something it competes against and, uh, you know, respectable numbers. Let's go for a drive. Hi everybody. I wanna start with a question. How much truck do you really need? I mean, ask yourself that question honestly. I know it's easy to get caught up in cool specs and figures and say to yourself, oh, my truck can tow 12,000 pounds and my truck has 18 million pound-feet of torque and my truck can haul, you know, 18 tons just in the back. But honestly speaking, do you really need those things or do you just need to go to the home and garden center and pick up a few bags of topsoil every once in a while, maybe get some sheets of plywood, a few two by fours, or maybe you have a lawnmower to haul around um, maybe you even have a small boat. Well, this truck, the Honda Ridgeline, can do all of that. 
It is a car-based truck. That means it has unit body construction, which means the body and the frame are one, as opposed to a body bolted onto a frame underneath it. And that means that you have much more car-like behavior when it drives, but you do lose some of that ultimate strength and uh, ability to tow really heavy things. So no, the Ridgeline does not have the best towing numbers, and its payload capacity is about the same as a Ford Ranger. But there are a lot of advantages to this being a car-based truck, and when you're driving this thing every day, I think you'll get a lot more benefits than you're gonna pay penalties for having something like this. So let's talk about that. So first of all, the platform feels really solid. You have good structure underneath you. The doors close with a nice solid thunk. You don't have any weird quivers or squeaks or anything like that when you go over bumps or uneven pavement. And uh, it generally is well behaved. The cabin is quiet, wind noise is well isolated, road noise is muted. It's a generally pleasant driving experience. You also have a good ride. It's supple, but not overly soft. Handles the bumps just fine, but also controls the body well in corners. So it feels and drives really well. And the three and a half liter V6 combined with the nine speed automatic transmission makes good use of the 280 horsepower and 262 pound feet of torque that you have. And that power is sent to all four wheels. So there's never really a traction issue. So no, it's not fast, but it's not slow either. Here, let me show you. Quickly coming to a stop. You get a little bit of a short shift in first gear, but then it revs up to, you know, past 6,500 RPM. Your torque peak is at 4,700 RPM, and uh, horsepower peak is right around 6,000 RPM. So you don't have this like super broad torque band of turbo motors, but you also have really nice linear power delivery, um, super consistent, and it doesn't sound bad either. But that's not the most clever bit about this powertrain. The Ridgeline has something called IVTM4, which is Honda's name for torque vectoring. That means that up to 70% of the power can go to the rear axle, and from there, Honda can send 100% of that torque to either the left or the right side. And that flexibility in torque distribution is really nice and helps you get out of a lot of different situations, which makes this truck a little bit more adventure friendly than you might initially think. And on top of that, Honda also gives you drive modes. I mean, you have to have drive modes these days, right? So you get normal, you also get snow, mud, and sand driving modes. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna change transmission calibration a little bit, it's gonna change the throttle map, but it's also gonna adjust the way the stability control works and the torque vectoring system to give you less or more wheel slip and adjust how the torque is distributed to help you get out of those different surfaces. And that's a, you know, that's a nice thing to have. That's a real uh, attaboy for Honda in, to include that. Plus you also get that e econ button that you saw, and that's also gonna adjust the throttle map and the transmission. Basically, it's gonna slow the throttle down and uh, keep the transmission in higher ratio gears for lower engine speed to try to eke out just a little bit more fuel economy. And you might wanna keep that button on because actually the Ridgeline fuel economy isn't all that great. 18 miles per the gallon in the city, 24 on the highway, 21 combined. Solid numbers in a lot of ways. Totally competitive with Tacoma, but actually a little bit behind Ford Ranger and, depending on how you equip, the Ford F-150 too. Now, I'm a little bit suspicious that what you'd find in the real world is a little different because the Ford F-150 and Ford Ranger both have turbocharged engines and turbocharged engines are really good at getting great fuel economy if you drive them really easily but turbo engines get really thirsty really fast once you start getting heavy with your right foot. Then again, you get really nice car-like driving behavior here. You get a really nice operating powertrain. You also get plenty of space inside. I've got lots of shoulder room in the passenger compartment and you saw in the second row, there's a ton of space back there as well. In fact, the cabin alone has nearly 110 cubic feet of space. That's pretty darn healthy. So whether it's stuff or people, you could fit a lot back here. 
And then that's in addition to obviously the pickup bed and that cool under bed storage compartment that's actually watertight that can function like a cooler. It's got that cool little drain in it. And then there's other little hidden storage compartments. The second row seat bottoms fold up so you could fit a lot of stuff that way as well. So you've got a lot of potential to really do a lot of different things with this truck and you know have real nice weekend adventures in it. You know you have good ground clearance, you have tons of space for stuff, you have all-wheel drive, and in terms of truck things, you can haul more than 1,500 pounds in the bed of this truck. That's, that's good. You know, that's competitive with Ford Ranger. And you can also tow 5,000 pounds. That is class three trailer. That is a pretty darn decent sized boat. That is a decent sized camping trailer. That's a cargo trailer. That's a lot of options. So no, you couldn't haul, you know, you couldn't take this to the farm and haul five tons of hay with you somewhere. But for the vast majority of people and the vast majority of activities, 5,000 pounds is plenty. And you're gonna be doing it in car-like comfort all the while. And on top of that, this has all the driver's assistance stuff that Honda offers. It's called Honda Sensing, and that's, you know, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, blind spot warning, and on and on and on. So it goes back to my initial question. How much truck do you really need? Do you need a truck that has more than 110 cubic feet of cabin space? Do you need, need a truck that offers more than 1,583 pounds of payload capacity? Do you need to haul more than 5,000 pounds? I mean, really? Really? I mean, think about it. Two jet skis, that's way under 5,000 pounds. Motocross bike trailers, several of those. Snowmobiles, all that, that's under 5,000 pounds. A pretty darn decent boat, that's under 5,000 pounds. Come on, do you really need more than 5,000 pounds? And that means when you're not doing those truck things, when you're not hauling topsoil from the home and garden center, when you're not hauling plywood and other things, when you're not getting a new lawnmower, when you're not doing the things that most people actually do with their truck, you have a much more pleasant car-like experience on the road. And I think that the vast majority of people would be much, much happier in something more car-like the vast majority of the time and then have something that's trucky enough when the times you actually need a truck. I'm Robin Warner, thank you for watching. And if you are still watching, please take a moment to like this video and subscribe to my channel. That really helps me out a lot and I really appreciate it. All right, goodbye.